All right, Maria, should we get going? Should we start? Let's do this. Well, right. okay, so we'll start with, I'm Maria. I am the admin of the Money Making Esthetician Group. And today I'm joined with the amazing David. Obsessed with him, obsessed with Wish. You have magic. You created magic and we love you. We love Steven and I appreciate all the support you guys give in the group. I love it. So thank you again, Maria. You know, we we're, you know what, it's a labor of love because it takes a lot of schedule. So I know that it's Tuesday and I know it's 1030 and I know people are in their treatment rooms and that's okay. We're obviously going to repost it for replay, but Maria, I appreciate you again for the group and everything that you do to provide this safe forum for estheticians to ask questions and a safe space. And, you know, I just appreciate it because it's been an awesome place to share some more wisdom. So as you guys can see, everyone can see the screen, right? Yes. Just okay, say good. no to drugs. Just say no to drugs. So you guys, as we're kicking off Acne Awareness Month, I was actually looking up, when did Acne Awareness Month start? And there was so much history. It was talking about King Tut having acne. I was like, Okay, well, wow. this is some information. So acne obviously has been around for a long time, and we're going to go through some drugs, and we're going to talk about some alternatives, obviously. So here I am, you guys, a lot of you on here. Thank you for joining today. This is me. I'm going to update this picture eventually. I have like higher hair today, a little bit more gray. I have been in the industry for over 20 years. Um, I've served with brands of Ada, Dermalogica, Cosmetics. There's a lot of acne specialists in our Wish Pro group that know me from Face Reality. And you know, my goal, you guys, uh, as a brand owner founder is to continually support the evolution of the skincare professional and what that means in our aesthetic industry. So constantly raising the bar, um, primarily through education and like things that are available to us, um, as providers in the industry. So it keeps me grounded, keeps me sane. Let's move everybody back over here. So today we're going to talk a little bit about the state of the industry. We're going to talk about the importance of focus, of course, acne opportunity, some misconceptions that get thrown our way, some traditional way versus and the side effects that come along with a traditional way of treatment. We're going to talk a little bit about wish protocols and things like that and staying relevant. And of course, those of you that are not already partnered with wish, we've got some acne awareness month promotions. So I love this and Misty will actually recognize this is because this is Misty's client and the, we've put the whole, we put real pictures in the whole presentation, you guys. And this is one of those things where, you know, she touches my heart because in January, the NIH changed the age range for people that are going to experience acne, um, by lowering it down to 11 years old. And she actually is 11 with a full face full of acne. So Misty and I are working together and treating her. Um, and I love that, you know, it's, it's, it's actually unfortunate that it's being experienced get less and less as people start their periods earlier and earlier hormones are affecting all of us, but obviously this would be traditional teenage acne. So we know that what's going on in the industry today. We know that there's more people suffering from acne than ever before. We've got a, a total, there's just so interesting. If you guys go into TikTok and you just type in acne, what pops up, it's nuts. It'll drive you crazy, drives me crazy. I can only take it for two to three minutes at a time. Um, what's going on in trending in skincare trends. I'm actually liking seeing the celebrity brand kind of die down. It's just kind of going away. But a new thing that's been coming up and you guys, you're all on social media. So you see this stuff too, but the cycling of misinformation. And this is what gets me so heated. I was talking to Maria um, right before we started. I saw a post and I was talking to Stephen, my business partner this morning about a post and it struck such a chord with me because it is misinformed. So we have, there was an esthetician, not an esthetician. There was an influencer who was sitting in a grassy field. Maybe you guys saw this or maybe not. And it was, May was Melanoma Awareness Month. And she was taking a, a quote out of a study um, you know, some of these studies can be really 50 pages long and, you know, people go through and they pull out information that fits whatever their narrative is, but was basically talking about how sunscreens actually cause cancer. And I like, was like having a moment and then lab muffin, Michelle on, uh, YouTube, she actually did a rebuttal to it, talking about the study and the, the cycle, the misinformation cycling. So you guys, when you read a study you're going to go through, there's an abstract at the beginning that's basically trying to give you a defined outcome for what the study is encompassing. And then you're going to go through a whole bunch of information about all the areas. And there's citations all throughout 
the study on where the information was pulled from to create the article. When you get down to the bottom, you're going to find some sort of a conclusion. And the conclusion is usually what people are pulling from. And they'll say things like more data is required or more studies are needed. It doesn't invalidate the entire study. Okay. So just note that, but I've been seeing it cycling around this little tidbits of information that are just fitting whatever influencers narrative. And I'm like, okay, that's crazy. Um, the influencer domination, I talked a little bit about this, um, I think on a podcast that it's losing relevant relevance. People are actually starting to become aware that, you know, people are getting paid. There's a lot of sponsored posting going on it. You know, there's been some very big high profile brands that have been launched um, off the backs of social media influencers that have already closed. So there's a lot of that coming to the surface of how real it is and how fake it is and, you know, is it relevant or not? The saturated marketplace, you know, our customers have more choices than they've ever had. You know, we've got soaring price points, $200 acne serums, the DIY skincare mess, of course, and the protocols, I keep talking about this, how slow they are to adapt. And this is where we've got new information. I've got a new peptide that should actually be here this week that I'm studying um, as a testing. It's like the one of the first peptides for acne that was developed completely through artificial intelligence. Crazy. And of course, we're in the era of skin health where people are looking for healthy skin. So you guys hear me say this all the time. Staying focused is one of the single most important things you can do for yourself as a small business owner. Um, I say you can do for yourself or your customers. It really is about educating yourself on something that you're passionate about. And so a little bit of our story, you know, I settled on 2018 on a mission to revolutionize the way professionals treat acne in the treatment room. I have been a witness to firsthand devastating effects of traditional medical treatments and heavily researched what was going on in dermatology, new emerging technology surrounding microbiome health, both internal and external. And for many years, I've listened to consumers and professionals say, I wish the product did this, or I wish it smelled like this. I wish, I wish, I wish. That's where Wish was born, the concept for Wish, that's where it came from. We set it on a mission to engineer professional therapeutic grade products and make them more accessible to the professional with a streamlined education approach. So back in the day, for those that have been in the industry for a long time, we had to wait for a rep to cycle through our business. And you know what? We're just in a different era now where we can get information when we need it. So here's where we've had some updates um, from the last time when we were talking about the opportunity of acne. We've got now 85% of people between the ages of 11 and 30. So you guys, only 15% of the population is not going to be affected by acne, which is just obscene. We were probably upwards close to around somewhere between 350 and 400 million people in the United States. That's a lot of acne. Um, and I know those of you that have been focusing on it, you see acne wherever you go. But lowering the age down to 11, and then, of course, raising the age up to 30 years old. I think it was 24 years old before. And we also know that acne can occur at any life stage, whether it's in your 30s, 40s, 50s. We had somebody in their 60s um, in our initial trial. So there is a, a prevalence of acne. And there's a lot of factors contributing to this. I'm probably going to do a whole webinar um, on the belief system that's happening about why acne is occurring such at a great rate, why it continues to increase. But the number one growing segment is adult female women, which I know sucks. I said that in a podcast. I'm like, I'm sorry, women. But 15% of women are, are the fastest growing segment of the onset of acne. And, you know, we're working through these cases, um, sometimes case by case and eliminating a lot of things, but women are being affected um, as a greater situation. So Misty, love that you're here. Love that you submitted this picture. So here's one of the biggest misconceptions that you guys that I hear is that I can't make money focusing on acne. And this is one of those things that triggered me yesterday through this post because there's an was an esthetician talking about basically giving preferential treatment to what is happening in dermatology over what is happening in aesthetics. And I'm never going to downplay what a dermatologist can provide you guys. I have a, a very good friend who is a dermatologist who removes a lot of skin cancer, um, most surgery day in and day out. There is a place for it, but what I don't want to ever do is discredit our industry and what can be provided and opportunities for you in your practice to actually have a very substantial income focused on acne. Now, if you haven't, we're going to have a podcast slide up here in here somewhere. Kathleen, thank you for mentioning the podcast, but there is a podcast I did with Douglas Preston. Douglas Preston has an extractor tool. He was talking about the partnering with a dermatologist 
And you guys, it's very interesting because I also did another podcast with Kirsten, who's got a very successful business in Iowa. She's just actually moving into a new space. She's expanding, bought a building, of course, growing um, about the partnerships. So the low key, I love how she said it. She said, low key, the medical community is trying to get into the aesthetic space. And you guys, you know that dermatologists don't make money off of prescriptions, right? There's a whole, there's a lot of legalities around getting kickbacks and trips and things to prescribe one drug over another drug, but they're not making money essentially writing a prescription. That's why you're seeing the influx of spas and many spas being attached to these practices. Physicians know, obviously, and if you watch that podcast with Douglas Preston, he talks about the dermatologist not wanting to put their kids on drugs. So they started sending him clientele and it was a group of dermatologists. So they all started sending their kids over. And then of course it just grew and grew and grew. So thinking about your own markets and if where, if you have a dermatologist or you see you've got a friend or you personally have a dermatologist, that is a great relationship. Um, especially when there's a traditional, a, th a traditional therapeutic that has failed it's a great relationship for you to have um, as a referral point. So I've always said a focused skin professional is a successful skin professional. And I know Maria, we see in the group all the time, there's, we've got lashes and brows and waxing and I'm 1099 and should I get paid 7% commission or 80% commission? And you know, these are all subjective questions usually based off where they are in the market. What is your overhead? There's a lot more questions that go into this. But I know from what I've seen you guys going on, I know I say 20 years, but actually next year I'll be in the industry for 30 years, 30 years, you guys, 30 years. How is that possible? But I've seen entire franchises built off of focused treatment models, whether that's blowouts, um, radiant wax, Aveda, Dermalogica. You guys know I worked for Dermalogica for a long time. Having a focused model, really, there is, of course, a very significant opportunity um, with acne. And as you start getting into this getting into it and you're getting your clients clearer, your clients will continue to purchase products from you and just come in for maintenance treatments. And my goal for our providers is for you to have 50 plus percent of your income coming from retail. So just know that um, on average, your acne retail is going to be seven to 10 higher, 10 times higher than traditional spa retail. And you guys, this is a, a little bit of a game changer in your head because we're, we're taught we have to sell product. Sell product, sell product, sell product. Well, you actually don't sell product when you're dealing with acne. You're educating your clients on the appropriate products for their skin type and their acne type. And it's going to be change that transaction from a needs-based, I need this product versus I want that $95 eye cream. So just think about that in a little bit in your head. And if you ever want to role play with me, I'm down for it. I love role playing. I love keeping the education moving. I love that. So the second misconception, of course, is that acne should be treated aggressively and I say here in the beginning of the 90s called and they want their protocols back. Anybody that remembers proactive, all of this, anyone that's treated a proactive client, um, it is literally, we don't have to treat the skin aggressively. When these products were introduced in the 90s, there was no talk of the microbiome, topical microbiome, internal microbiome. We were just like blow the face up, over exfoliate, alcohol-based toners, BPO, no SPF. Like, no, we have a different approach now and how we're actually going to treat acne and it doesn't require that. And I look, look at how little the beeves is here, you guys. <laughs> and I just, I literally got the mail last night and there, uh, Jessica Simpson was on the cover of the Costco magazine. And I thought this is amazing. Cause she built, I don't know if she's ever going to sing it again, but she built a pretty, pretty significant business, um, basically on QVC, which I think is interesting. So again, more real life pictures. This is actually, um, from Tiffany up in Littleton, New Hampshire, Tiffany, when you're listening to this today is Tiffany's birthday, happy birthday. But the other misconception, like we talked about, is that most acne sufferers are in their teens. And while you will see a lot of teen clients, um, this is actually down here in the corner is from uh, Mariela, who is based here in Palm Desert. She, This is a month-long uh, treatment, home care treatments. Like She's getting really, really amazing results. She just came on board with us like two months ago, um, seeing really great results. She's already on her third set of retail, like doing amazing. But this study pulled from the Journal of Clinical and Aesthetic Dermatology, carried out based off of 1,013. So you guys, you, there's always these random numbers, like why is it 1,013? And I was talking about this before, but basically there was probably, it could have been 1,300, it could have been 1,500 people, but the people that completed the full study, that's why it ends up being 1013. But the interesting thing to note here is the prevalence of acne among patients between the ages of 20 and 29, not teenagers was almost 51%. That is adult acne. 
And then you've got 30 to 39 years old, 35%, 40 to 49 years old, just under 14%. So there is, of course, a prevalence of teenage acne, but as we're seeing, there is adult acne and it is continuing to grow. So then this is the one that gets me the most riled up. <clears throat> and this again is a, 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 a customer from Fern and Dagger up in uh, Little to New Hampshire, is that a traditional medical approach is better than what I can offer. And you guys want to see me get jumping up and down and get crazy <clears throat> is when I hear this. So I don't want to ever discount or discredit. Um, I've dated a physician. I understand my my nephew right now just went through a white coat ceremony. He's becoming a physician is also. And there's a lot that goes on in medical school. And there's a lot that goes on in focusing on dermatology. Um, it's just one of those things would be acne. You know, they're trained in, in skin disease. There's a lot of skin diseases above and beyond acne. However, I do know, and I've seen thousands of cases at this point, you guys, thousands of cases where traditional aesthetics have been able to help these people with acne. Usually the people that were coming um, have come from a, a place where they've already tried antibiotics. Some pe pe people have been on antibiotics for multiple years. Um, Misty herself, who's actually on the webinar right now, came to me and was asking me questions about the course and then talking about having side effects for years after being on medication. So we know that the, the therapeutics, when you actually understand the things that we teach in the course about the root cause of acne, that treating something to suppress oil production, whether that's through isotretinoin or spironolactone or through uh, bacteria, uh, through an antibiotic or something like that, they're just one little piece of the entire acne puzzle. And it's just symptomatic. So what usually ends up happening, what we see a lot of prevalence of, within three to four months of somebody stopping the protocol, they start experiencing acne again. And it's really super frustrating. And it's usually a trip back to the dermatologist to either go through another cycle of antibiotics or another round of Accutane or something like that. And we know that it's not treating the root cause, of course, um, of why acne is being created in the skin. So it gets me all riled up. So let's talk a little bit about the traditional way. So Symptomatic treatments such as spironolactone, isotretinone, which you guys know that it actually it's being marketed to me right now. So I subscribe to everything you guys, of course, because I just want to stay as educated as possible. But there is a there's ads circulating around right now in, in Instagram land about microdosing Accutane. And there's going to be I'm just we're hearing a lot of dosing situations with people having bad outcomes with Ozempic and Manjaro and Wagovi, like all this weight loss stuff. And there is a, there's a lot of speculative uh, information cycling about dosage and why people are having bad side effects. And they're usually saying, well, they're throwing one therapeutic at a dumpster fire and expecting a miracle to happen. And there's, of course, you know, we all have a different health house and our health is all different and our microbiomes are all unique and our bacteria, everything is unique to us as individuals. And I often say it's one size fits one. So we're not ever going to talk about it's one size fits all because it isn't. It's very, very specific to your client and your individual. And uh, we don't, we just want people to avoid side effects, you guys. This is where we get to raise the bar in the aesthetic community because we do have an opportunity to really change lives. And those of you that have helped clear uh, somebody with acne, it is life changing and it gives me all the feel good. You guys, I get the pictures on the weekends all the time of, of people getting their faces cleared and how happy they are. It just changes their outcomes. So we don't want to under underestimate that. So usually as a first line of defense, we talk about a traditional medical approach is better than it's actually absolutely not. So we got we go through an antibiotic is usually the first line of defense. And that is usually can be one of a certain amount of antibiotics based off of what they're actually the dermatologist is trained in using. And I usually say if somebody's been prescribed a topical versus a non-topical. Great. Okay. But again, we're just treating one thing. We're treating bacteria. bacteria. And we know that antibiotics um, don't know the difference between the good bacteria and the bad bacteria. They kill all the bacteria. So we have to rebalance the gut microbiome. Same thing topically. We have to rebalance the topical microbiome. So we've got a, there's just recent article uh, in JAMA. Actually, it was two months ago talking about in the world of dermatology, they know that antibiotics are being overprescribed for acne and it's creating antibiotic resistance. And there's some really scary cases, you guys, you don't, I mean, if you want to do some interesting study, just go and look up antibiotic resistance on YouTube. I've watched some really horrifying 
uh, scenarios where people have been resistant to antibiotics from overexposure, having to have fecal transplants, like all kinds of crazy things because they have been overprescribed antibiotics. So there's a whole lot of things. We Most of us have taken an antibiotic at some point or another in our lifetime. Um, and when you have an infection and you need an antibiotic, you want it to work and you don't want to be resistant because of the overprescription of antibiotics. Like, absolutely not. So then we talk about clindamycin. This is a topically prescribed antibiotic. And the reason that I, I pull this out, you guys, is because it there's a 5% BPO gel in here. You hear me talk about BPO. That's the the name for benzoyl peroxide. Um, and this was specifically included in this um, combination to prevent antibiotic resistance in the skin. And I know from my many, many years, you guys, the BPO is required here. The clindamycin is not. So we are not, it's not necessary. We don't need to have a BPO and an antibiotic together to get a really stellar result on the skin. So spironolactone, we've had some, I've actually had conversations with many of you guys uh, that are wish pros that have been prescribed spironolactone. Um, one of our clients in Vermont, she was talking about the frequent urination and she's like, David, like I've been on this medication for four months and I just have to pee constantly. And so she's like, it's not, it's Sorry, not affecting ready. my acne enough to where it's actually giving me a positive enough effect that I want to stay on the drug. But again, you guys, this is a this is a situation where, in my opinion, it's a very isolated approach to acne because the whole point of spironolactone is to suppress androgen hormones like testosterone. And when you think about this, just to make the correlation with food, if you ingest a lot of sugar, you have an insulin response, you've got a high insulin response, your body can produce more androgens like testosterone which then when you're already acne prone, it's stimulating sebaceous activity, which you're just pumping out more oil. And if you are already acne prone, you're just gonna exacerbate that. Now, there's a lot of ways that we can address oil production and it doesn't necessarily have to be through a medication. So, you know, some of the side effects and you guys, these are, I didn't make these up. These are not side effects that David's just like, well, David, drowsiness, dizziness, lightheadedness. These are actually from the brochures that come with the medication. Okay, so nausea, vomiting, headache, um, you know, they, uh, they say to minimize lightheadedness, to get up slowly when rising from a seated position. So you don't pass out. I'm like, what is this necessary? And then of course it can't be prescribed to men because they start developing breast tissue while taking the medication and it, it's not, not appropriate. So here's the, you know, it's the mother of them all. And it's the one that is the most popular and the one that gets a lot of, uh, press. And there's a couple slides I'm going to go through about the reported things that have been reported. But I don't know if you guys actually know that this drug was initially created as a chemotherapy drug to treat neuroblastomas. And I could do a whole podcast on what that is, but essentially it is a, a form of cancer. So when we think about these things, like what, why am I taking this? Like it is approved as a drug to treat. And you say that word, I was like looking it up today. I'm going to mess it up right now. Basically, acne that is non-responsive to conventional therapy. So you have people being prescribed Accutane with very minor acne. That's not who it's for, and that's not who it's to be prescribed for. When I see these microdosing ads on Instagram about you don't even have to see the dermatologist, you just phone it in and like have a, a consult over the phone or like through video chat. You guys know that you need to see the skin, touch the skin, feel the skin, take pictures of the skin, look at the skin, magnified to understand the level of congestion, like, no, we're not going to be doing this over. So it's just interesting because when you look at all of these side effects on here, these are things that have happened to real people. This is not hypothetical. This is not made up. This is like, I think that one of the studies that looked at a hundred percent of the people reported having dry lips, of course, you're drying out all the sebaceous activity, of course, but the suicidal behavior, the ideation, the depression, just a lot of weird things with your white blood cell count and just a, a whole osteopor, just a lot of, there's a lot of side effects. And this is where we in the aesthetic community can really educate our clients on healthy alternatives to get rid of their acne without having to go through prescriptions. Because I know people want to, they just want to get a, a protocol that feels good. And when you start looking at this brochure, you're like, wow, David, like those are real side effects. So this is what the post somebody was talking about last night. So 17,829 
psychiatric adverse events with the use of isotretinoin, formerly known as Accutane. You guys, there's a reason why it's not even called Accutane anymore for lawsuits um, between 1997 and 2017. So now there are some, there are some things in this study, you guys, there is probably, it wasn't perfect. There's probably some duplicated, duplicated things and they're noted in the study. But what I wanted to say to show you over here was just looking at the, the breakdown of the age group and noting down here at the bottom, completed suicide. These are people that actually took their lives in these age categories, which is horrific. Now there's some, obviously there's some talk where, you know what, people could already be clinically depressed with their acne before they started taking Accutane. Of course, yes, people experience depression without it, but there's a high prevalence of parents reporting strange behavior. My kid did not act this way before Accutane. There's some very unique stories about it, but a lot of psychiatric um, eating disorders, emotional uh, emotional liability issues, self-injurious behavior, um, suicidal ideation, like just people are like, you know what? I wasn't thinking about this before. In 10 to 19 years old, a thousand people, you know, 493 people between the ages of 20 and 29. It just goes to show you that, you know what, where there's smoke, there's fire. And I, I know that there's the, the, the thing that I saw yesterday was trying to discredit this study. And first of all, I just want you guys to know, think about yourself, your personal self and like how you move through the world. And you're like, Usually if a medication is not working for us or for having a bad side effect, we just stop taking it. We don't take the time to actually go and report the adverse event to the FDA. So when you have this many people reporting an adverse, rea ad adverse reaction or event, I say whether there's smoke, there's fire. And this is actually pulled from a whole bunch of different places. So there is information. Anybody that ever wants the study, these studies, I'll post them in the WishPro group. Um, it's good reading and it's good education to really understand what is actually happening. Because when you have your, a parent that brings their teenager in and they're looking at, you know what, how can you help my kid? Um, I've either had a negative side effect or I myself had a negative side effect and I don't want my kids to go through that. Um, it's relevant to be educated in that. So here's the beautiful slide where I say the moment your business changed forever, because I am a long-term industry veteran. And I have seen the ups and downs of constant trendy ingredients focused with a couple of viral DIY acne treatment posts. And I understand the need to give the aesthetic professional the tools and the competitive advantage to remain the authority in the acne treatment space. You guys, this is all happening through education. So as we go through this, I'm going to talk about, of course, some offers at the end, if you want to join us, if you're not already a Wish Pro. But I really set out on a step of how can we revolutionize the way that the skin is treated in the treatment room. We've conventionally thought we need to overdry the skin. Barrier function is a real thing. And impaired, I'm Mary Maria on our very first chat. And a barrier barrier is a real thing. Um, you don't have a, you can't have a healthy microbiome with impaired barrier function. So when you're treating acne, this is where we have that balancing act of actually keeping the skin healthy through that process. So my friend, Jill, you guys, I wanted to talk about Jill. Jill is a Wish Pro. She's in San Francisco. I love Jill. She's actually the second Wish Pro to write a book and publish a book. Um, it's called Synthesis. If you guys are looking for an amazing read on mastering the art of client experience, you can get this book on Amazon. I think you can get it from her website also, but probably Amazon, jilljodar.com. You can find her. Um, the second chapter, though, that I thought was really interesting is when shit goes sideways. <laughs> Because you guys, you know what? In business, shit is going to go sideways. So I love this, Jill. I wanted to make sure I, I threw this out here because everyone's talking about client experience. And when you're dealing with your acne clients, it doesn't matter if your clients are coming to you for acne, for aging, for waxing, for any of these things. It's really about how to manage the best experience and making you stand out in your marketplace. And this is going to be one of those competitive tools that gives you an advantage over that. So I love that, Jill. Thank you for that. So let's talk a little bit about a, microbi a balanced microbiome and what that means. So we have an ecosystem. You guys, I, I did a, a whole podcast um, about the microbiome, and I'm going to do a Wish Pro uh, in the Wish Pro group. I'm going to talk a little bit more in depth about it. But to make a, a to bring it down to bite size, you have an ecosystem of bacteria living on your skin, your hair, your body, your ear. It's all over your entire body. It's not just isolated to your face. And this bacteria is keeping fungi, yeast, uh, viruses, um, all in check. It's all managing this ecosystem, very similar to your gut. And when you have a balanced microbiome, you age slower. 
Now, everybody, when I do these presentations, when I go back and look at the most viewed parts, that's what they listen to. Wait, David, how do I age slower? What do I do? When you have a balanced microbiome, you're optimizing your skin health. So when the skin is out of balance, you've got too much C. acne's bacteria. It's overtaking staph bacteria, which then you can develop acne if you're prone to that. Um, if your staph bacteria is overtaking your C. acne's bacteria, you can develop a staph infection. So these things are very, it's about balance. And when we are looking at adjusting the skin, getting it back into balance, we're really talking about optimizing microbiome health. So I love this. I love this part of this. Stephen probably put this in here for me. Thank you, Stephen. Always making me look amazing in all these beautiful presentations. Powerful does not have to mean aggressive. And you guys, you know, remember back in the day, we see things about phenol peels. We see extremely low pH peels. We see um, high percentage of TCA. I see people buying it on Amazon. I'm like, what are you guys doing? What are you doing? Not great for your high fits clients. Um, and also, in my opinion, there's different ways to, to treat the skin. We want to actually help that cell, that cell turnover when someone's going through acne and decongest the skin and do a little resurfacing. We can lift some pigmentation, but we don't need to blow the face up through that process. We don't need to create instability or more inflammation. Um, we'll talk a little bit, obviously we go over chirality, but essentially chirality is uh, correcting molecules. So you're just basically not producing more inflammation on the skin. And that is the wish approach, you guys. So unlike traditional prescriptive approach that only addresses surface level, I say side effect symptoms, wish targets the root cause of your skin issues. So I'm gonna show you a little slide up here about a pillared approach, but this is essentially the road trip, the road trip, it is a road trip. <laughs> it's also a roadmap of how we actually take you through with our formulations, optimizing the microbiome, an adversity mimetic approach, your prescriptive uh, long-term clear care is what we call it, your access to the academy. And of course, you guys, you always have access to me. So I love that. Computational chemistry, this is very a high science term. Everybody knows what artificial intelligence is. This is essentially taking best in class ingredients, you guys, with the most data to back up their claims. And I want to incorporate that data and those ingredients into our products. So by the time you actually get a wish product in your location, you know, there's been a lot of research and studying behind it. And, you know, I'm constantly updating stuff. I just actually, you know, for you wish pros that are on here new, we're getting ready to do a, uh, an e-blast, but we just actually included uh, L-glutathione in a Lantuan. We upgraded this formulation to include those two ingredients um, in our Mandelic serum because your skin as you age depletes of L-glutathione, but also when you're using BPO, it can be depleted and we wanna put those antioxidants back in the skin. So it's now included in 5% and the next production run that we do of the 10 and 15, we will also include it. So little you hear it first, you heard it here first. These are the six pillars um, of acne treatment. So you guys, this is when we talk about root cause. Number one, we wanna bring the skin back into balance. And this is if acne is present or showing, showing on the skin, the microbiome is out of balance. And also this doesn't just relate to acne, dermatitis, psoriasis, eczema, and of course acne, these topical skin manifestations, the microbiome is out of balance and we want to work on bringing it back into balance um, through regulating some of that over proliferation of bacteria. Oil production. Now, some of you um, that are out there and practicing, you know, when people will show up and they have drier skin types, you can't have drier skin types with acne. Um, and you've got to, obviously, we want to put some lipids back in the skin. Maybe we're going to use Emerge over Confidently Clean. That's for you to make the correct determination through your consultation. Follicular epidermal hyperproliferation. This medically is known as retention hyperkeratosis. This is addressing the hyper cell shedding. So when you look at a healthy skin and, you know, we talk about your cells are turning over every 28 days when you're a younger individual. And as you start to grow a little bit older, it starts to slow down. That's why we want to properly exfoliate to keep that fresh cell turnover. When you're acne prone, your cells can shut up to five times quicker. So you're getting oil, you're getting all those cells, and then you're trapping the bacteria, the bacteria is proliferating, and you're actually starting acne. So you want to address that cell shedding through healthy exfoliation. Of course, we want to calm down inflammation. We don't want to have extra inflammation in the skin. Acne already is an inflamed skin condition. We want to calm it down as much as possible. There are calming ingredients, you guys, across every one of our formulations, including peels. Um, pigmentation, we want to make sure that we're evening the skin tone and we're preventing or we're treating any PIH or PIE that can occur post-acne. Um, we can do that by keeping the skin in its healthiest state while we're clearing. And of course, nutritional guidance. You guys, I did a, an interview, a podcast with uh, Katie Marshall with MBK Acne Detective, and she talks a lot about gut health. 
and nutrition, we give you a handout that you can download for foods that we want to avoid while we're acne prone to make it easier for your clients. So next generation acne treatment, of course, we now have a solid understanding of the microbiome and it is changing you guys. There's so much new information coming out all the time about the collection methods. There was like, they're trying to actually estimate the account. It's probably in the trillions now of actual bacteria that are living on the skin. So we know that if we can address the microbiome through professional treatments and home care, I'm highlighting this uh, picture here because this is a gal that contacted us through one of my friends who's an esthetician actually in Minneapolis. This is actually his cousin's daughter. Um, and it, you can see there's been definite change in the skin here. She is just using home care. Now I'm going to get her to a wish pro and we are going to accelerate these results, but we can, the fastest way to clear is through professional home care and professional treatments. Of course, we know that the magic is in the treatment room. So just a few of our, our multifunctional actors, you guys, of course, salicylic acid, BPO, Totorol comes from a tree in New Zealand, niacinamide, which is vitamin B3, it's in, included in multiple products, zinc, sulfur, vitamin C, multiple weights, hyaluronic acid. We have a really cool vitamin A serum coming out. Ooh, Steven, I just let the cat out of the bag. Um, gluconolactone is a polyhydroxy acid, very, very gentle. Lactobacillus ferment is in phytoactive clearing serum. It is actually going to help regulate that healthy bacteria on the skin. THD ascorbate is a phenomenal vitamin C ester um, in our vitamin C serum. And we've actually stabilized L ascorbate with, with colloidal gold. So you guys, we have three cleansers. We were the first acne brand to launch a creamy cleanser. I love seeing the industry take suit. Those of you that know, know. Um, we launched Emerged Biome Repair as an ultra mild creamy emollient for dry, sensitive, or compromised skin types. Um, when your clients are in the throes, especially in winter, when it gets dry and cold and you're, you know, we're out here in the desert where there's no humidity and you're using BPO, you can, your skin can get dry, it can dry a little bit. We can definitely recommend Emerge as you're going through the clearing process. This is not going to inhibit any of the activity from your BPO treatments at night. We definitely want to just support a healthy mix of lipids and water in the skin. That's how you have a healthy barrier function, healthy microbiome. Confidently clean, of course, our 2% salicylic cleanser and then common cleansing gel, um, which is our hyperallergenic pH balance, one of our top selling cleansers also, um, while you're going through the acne clearing process. And your clients could go through that at any point in time, you guys. They might actually jump, start with confidently clean, bounce over to common cleansing gel, and then be on Emerge for a while. That's okay. That's why there's different cleansing options to give your clients options wherever they're at in their clearing process. You've got some different percentages here across the board for your BPOs um, are our prescriptive only. The 5 and the 10% also include 3% sulfur for those anti-inflammatory benefits. And then you've got your 10 and your 15% prescription only. Prescriptive only have to be prescribed in clinic in your Mandelica series, which is Mandelic Acid, which is great for acting treatment because it's a very large uh, molecule, penetra penetrates the epidermis very slowly, Ultra also has natural antibacterial, antifungal properties to it. So great for, um, of course, acne prone skin. Phytoactive clearing serum. I talked a little bit about this, but the lactobacillus ferment, this amino acid here, I can never pronounce it correctly, but it's a great PIH suppressor. Um, it's in a lot of really expensive serums uh, for treating hyperpigmentation. We actually prescribe this to our higher fits clients that maybe are going to experience PIH with chemical exfoliation. Um, saccharide isomer, it's a sebum regulator. We've got lysophosphatidic acid, lysolecithin, and lecithin is in there as a poor management tool to help with healthy keratinization. So think of keeping your pores tight, keeping them very rigid. You know, people say, well, we can't change the size of a pore. Absolutely, but we can keep them healthy. We can keep them clean and we can keep them tight, which will help them appear smaller. There is a gluconolactone in there, which is that gentle PHA, just helping with that natural stimulating that really healthy exfoliation. And then, of course, amazing antioxidants. We want to keep all of those in the situation. Micro moisture, this is our number one selling moisturizer for your act active acne prone kids. 5% niacinamide here. You guys, there is a, a pore clogging checker on your on websites. And I jumped up and down about this in a podcast that I did. There are ingredients on the list, you guys. The study is from 1989. It is 2024. There have been thousands of ingredients. I jump up and down about this list because it really is about formulation. And there are some ingredients on that list that are very supportive to barrier function. So if you have those or you're looking at those, it's a plugin for your website. It's outdated data. 
Um, of course, if you're using some of those, somebody's putting full 100% strength in some of those ingredients, there's a lot of colorants, a lot of animal derived ingredients. Of course, that's going to cause acne, but no, not all of those ingredients are considered negative or bad. SPF 30, non-echinogenic, of course, we're going into summer months. Everybody needs to have an acne safe SPF while they're going through clearing. Worry bouncing toner, really popular in our humid areas. Macro moisture is my personal moisturizer of choice loaded with tetrahexyl. You've got matrixyl in there, which is a really well-studied peptide. C21, use it every day. This is our multi-molecular weight. Uh, it's got three types of vitamin C in it. Also an unsung hero for when you're clearing from acne, it helps the skin heal faster. So all of that being said, you guys, I just want to reiterate the protocols are designed to treat the root cause of acne and not just treat symptoms. We're not just treating oil production. We're not just treating bacteria. We're going to treat the individual as a whole, and we're going to address the root causes of why acne is formed in the skin. There is no cure for acne. There's no cure for acne. So we are going to manage symptoms. We're going to prevent scarring. We're going to prevent, you know, when you see acne just starting, if you jump on that right away, you're going to avoid it because the acne bacteria proliferates very quickly. <clears throat> we want to make sure that we can address that as much as possible. So I talked a little bit about our peels, but this just gives you a little bit about our chemical exfoliation. We have three different peels are called Restoraplex. And, you know, I use a lot of uh, high science chirality in these peels. Um, it's just above and beyond exfoliation. We're actually putting some chirally corrected amino acids in here to help with the new cells that are coming forward. These peels self-neutralize, they stay on the skin. So there's just a lot of chemistry that goes into which you guys, I am constantly studying cosmetic chemistry. So there's a lot of uh, great things in here uh, to really, really above and beyond just exfoliation. So this is our friend, Will Hanghold, Hanghold Dermatology down in Florida. And it, he said to us, David, you'd really developed a comprehensive approach to treating acne. And I'm like, thank you, Will. I love that. I love it because we love all the accolades. So continuing education, of course, is the single most important thing you can do for yourself and your clients. We want you to empower your practice, give back the confidence your clients deserve. You guys, this is not just about confidence for your clients. It's about confidence for you as a service provider as well. And that happens through education. When you know more, so what did, what did I just say, Stephen, a couple of days ago, when you learn more, you earn more. So the more education that you have around being the expert with your clients, you'll have a robust practice in not a long time. It really gets some clients clear. They become your walking billboards. And I know some wish pros that are here are seeing this happen in real life, um, but it is definitely a game changing opportunity. So when you're watching this, you guys pause. These are all the things that we teach you uh, in the course. Most of this you did not learn in aesthetic school. There is a little bit of review. You can always go back and watch this, these videos again. And we take you through modules. You pass a module 90% or better. It opens up the next module. When you're finished with the whole series, you can go back and look at all of it again. There are downloads in here, intake forms, uh, uh, nutrients, uh, foods to avoid, supplements, things like that for you to actually, if you want to actually brand them yourself and then pass them out to your clients, you have the option to do so. So I say that's the what you earn. This is the what you can learn. This is starting with five acne only clients and then adding on to your roster within a six month period, getting yourself to a total of 55 clients in six months. We did a hundred dollar service price point. Some people are charging $85. Some people are charging $150. You can do the math a little bit differently, but the idea here, you guys, is what I really want you to walk away from this slide here is that there's opportunity. There's a lot of opportunity here, obviously for service revenue, but also for retail revenue. I saw in the group yesterday, somebody was talking about laundry. <laughs> how much laundry they have to do and towels that you have to wash and like which Tide Pods. And I don't like my stuff smelling like Clorox. So Clorox, so I use vinegar. This is one of the things where when you get really good at treating acne, you're actually not putting your clients under blankets and sheets. Um, I have clients that use the little bib that like dentists use um, and they're doing their whole treatment where they're actually avoiding all of that. So the towels and the sheets and the laundry and all of that. And it's just, you know, you get really good. You're doing 30, 45 minute uh, treatment rotations. So just something to think about because this is, um, I know, is anybody, I actually do enjoy doing laundry with really fancy stuff, but that's a whole nother podcast. <laughs> so I love to have put in some testimonials, you guys. I love seeing people post about us on Facebook, but I think it's really great to take um, information in real time from real people and like let you guys see 
This is Tiffany up in New Hampshire. And the reason why I talk about Tiffany a lot, you guys, because she's in a town of 6,000 people. All right. She's way, way up there in Littleton, New Hampshire, 6,000 people. I hope she's doing something fun for her birthday today. She went through face reality training. She took Katie's acne MBK course, and I'm just watching her sales grow and grow and grow every single month. Misty's having great sales, growing and growing and growing. This is what happens when you're educated and you know what you're doing around acne. So I love the accolades. I love Terry giving us an accolade. Um, she's with FR for many, many years. She carries Wish now. She feels our products are healthier for the skin. You guys, that's why I designed them because I knew what was actually being left out of acne treatment. And so you're going to see a lot of skin loving uh, ingredients throughout our product lineup. So, of course, we couldn't do a webinar with Maria without offering a huge promotional opportunity. So I always go to the end slide really quick, and then people are like start texting me afterwards and start asking a lot of questions. So I just quickly wanted to walk you guys through each one of these uh, packages. The course only package. So here's the money making only offer you guys. It's 50% off. For the first 10 people that want to purchase this uh, course only at the 750 price point, we're going to give you 50% off an, a welcome kit, which is $275. So we'll invoice you after you just place the order for that, but 50% off, awesome, awesome deal. If you have a an option where you want to actually choose some products, so that's a course only, you do get a practitioner book shipped out to you. It's your study guide. The tools of mastery booklet here in the middle, this is a discounted course. So you're going to get, this is a $1,500 package, but you're also going to get a welcome kit. When you graduate, you're going to get a $750 product credit and you have the option to purchase a pantry box at 10% off. This is, you can spend that product credit however you want. You guys are very easy to work with here. There's no minimum order requirements. You get free shipping over 250. That eventually does need to go to 500. Right now it's 250. Um, and so there's an amazing deal offered, obviously value in that package. The Built for Success package, you guys, this is our most popular package, and I love that people see the value in it. This brings the course price down to $500. You also get a free welcome kit, and you get a full pantry box when you graduate. Now, for those that have multiple, we have uh, spas that have multiple treatment rooms, and they want to buy additional pantry boxes. It does come with a complete back bar setup um, and also four of each retail so you have the option um, within your first 30 days to get 20% off additional pantry boxes just to set up your other treatment rooms. So all amazing values for Acne Awareness Month. I love it and I appreciate it so much. So what are you going to get, you guys, partnering with us? You can use this code down here at the bottom with the course only. That's 750 price point. Use code WISH, aam 24 can I um, interrupt? <laughs> absolutely. That would be Steven. Yeah. Hi, everybody. It's Steven. So, David, I just went in here and um, to extend the Wish AAM24, you don't need a code to get the price, um, the discount price on the course. It's only if you have some products that you would like at wholesale. We're extending a wholesale price uh, for products if you want single items, but you, it's really only when you buy the course. So, we would need to void a transaction if you're just buying 50% off items and not getting a course that's intended if you are getting one of the courses. So all the products are 50% off if you get a course and or if you want a welcome kit, which is actually more than, it's a better than wholesale price. Right, thank you for that. So you guys, there's people that wanna try products um, and that's one of the, I don't wanna call it a barrier to entry, but we make you go through education first where you have access to wholesale. So we're just, people wanna to, want to try products out and we wanna be the brand that lets you try products. So if you do want to try some stuff, we'll give you a, obviously the code to go in and be able to purchase some product. It's meant to be get a course and then of course, uh, try some products. But I just want to highlight these before and then I'll go into the Q&A up here. I just want you guys to know that the, you know, we're in the aesthetic world right now where a lot of companies have been acquired um, by equity firms or L'Oreal or Estee Lauder or Unilever. I just read yesterday that Estee Lauder uh, finished the acquisition of Deseem, which is the ordinary for $1.7 billion. Like it's crazy to me. And I remember when Estee Lauder bought a beta. And so I just, my, the takeaway here is that you guys, we're an independent business and I want to really make sure that you guys feel that, that we are here to support independent business and we're not owned by anybody. We're owned by yours truly. So independent business supporting you guys, your success is our success. If you don't grow, we don't grow. So it's very, it's a, my vested interest to make sure that you continue to grow. 
We're going to continue to provide you with industry-leading education, state-of-the-art formulation, change your business outlook with a confidence-boosted model. This is a little bit different than, I don't use the term anti-aging in our marketing, but we want to make sure that we're putting confidence back into your clients and you, obviously, as a service provider. Uh, a sustainable model with the largest opportunity in your industry. You guys just, if you think about acne is the number one skin condition in the U.S., so there are no shortage of acne people running around um, that are potential clients for us. Supported by industry veterans, that would be Stephen over there on the side too. Um, inspired learning products and services, and of course, partnering with a focus team. I'm not making wax products. I'm not making lash products. I am over here constantly ideating you guys. I've got, we've been working on an oil cleanser, um, which is phenomenal hearing it first. Um, I've got a finalized azelaic uh, acid serum we've been working with. This is going to be great for your rosacea clients also. Um, but we're just going to continue to ideate over here. And this is just going to never, it's, it never is going to end. Your education is never going to end. Just like my education is never going to end. We're going to continually ideate with new products. So thank you guys for taking the time. I appreciate it. Everybody that took time. I know it's Tuesday. I know 1030. I know people are going to watch this in the replay. Um, I think the first webinar I did with Maria had over 2000 views and with most of it happened in replay. So if you're watching this at a later time and you need to shoot us a DM or send us an email about what offers are available, please do so. Follow us on Instagram. Of course, follow our YouTube page. That's where we pump out our podcast. I wish is available anywhere you guys are getting podcasts. I love it. I actually had somebody uh, by the course last week and she was telling me that she said, David, you know what? You actually have a very soothing voice. I was like, you know what? You should probably tell Steven that because he doesn't think my voice is very soothing. <laughs> In the office throughout the day, um, listening to our podcast and just getting a lot of information around other service providers and what people are doing in the space. And I love that. So I'm going to go up here. Steven, you've probably done a great job of keeping questions going in the chat, but let me open this um, and see if there's anything I can answer for you. I see all the links in here. Anybody have a question? Don't be shy. You can even unmute yourself and actually ask a question. Let me put this over here. I mean, this just means that we have a really, really smart group of people in here. I love that. So if you guys do watch this presentation in the future and you uh, do have questions that come up, of course, you can send us a DM on through Facebook or through Instagram, uh, through any of our social media channels, of course, Wish Skin Health. That is our corporate phone number, 760-309-4600. If you're listening to this, I know there's people that are driving. I also had an esthetician in LA tell me that she's like, David, when I'm doing my facial massage, I'm actually listening to your podcast. <laughs> I'm like, shouldn't you be focusing on your client? You know what? It's okay. So you can scan any of these, visit our website. It is You can visit trywish.com or wishskinhealth.com. That will get you to where we're at. And if there's not any questions, Kathleen, yes, thank you for visiting um, or, or attending, uh, then I am going to actually round it out. Steven, is there anything that I didn't cover? Okay, good. All right, you no, guys. I think we're good. I love that. Well, I appreciate all the time. I appreciate all the attention. We're going to be posting a lot this month, all things about acne, little statistics, little product tidbits and things like that. So look for our post and... Uh, We'll be talking to you soon. Thank you, guys. Bye.